We're going to take a look at the lymphatic system in this lecture. So remember the immune system is made out of two parts. We just talked about the white blood cells and the other part of the immune system is the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is really important because this is where the white blood cells will be made. It's also where the B and T lymphocytes mature and the white blood cells will hang out here looking for any invaders. And then also the lymphatic system will drain any excess fluid from the tissues. Here's just a picture of the lymphatic system. So there are some different lymphatic organs. Um, so for example, the spleen, we have the thymus, bone marrow, and then we've got all these lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels. So there's a lot of things that are part of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system consists of primary and secondary lymphoid organs and tissues. You don't need to know which one's primary or secondary. I won't ask you that. So the primary lymphoid organs and tissues, this includes the red bone marrow and the thymus. The red bone marrow is really important because that's where all the white blood cells are made. And the B lymphocytes will mature in the red bone marrow and then the T lymphocytes mature in the thymus. So that's why they've got a T in their name for thymus and then the B, B lymphocytes have a B there for bone marrow. The secondary lymphoid organs and tissues, this is just where the white blood cells will hang out looking for any invaders. So these include things like the spleen, lymph nodes, and then we'll talk about salt and malt. The red bone marrow is where all of the white blood cells are made and it's also where the B lymphocytes will mature. And what we mean by B lymphocytes maturing is that when the B lymphocytes are made, remember that they're all different from each other and they all recognize something different. So it's just random what kind of receptor that they have and what they recognize. And there are some B lymphocytes that are made that actually recognize our body parts. So we definitely don't want those out and attacking our body. So we check and if there's any B lymphocytes that recognize any body parts then those get either killed or turned off and that's called clonal deletion. A clone is just a population of cells that are all the same. So like if you have um, a B lymphocyte that recognizes um, cartilage in your joints then you'd want to deactivate or kill all of those cells that are just like that. So that would be clonal deletion. Thymus is located in the chest right above the heart. It's very large when you're younger, but after puberty, it starts shrinking in size. And then when you're elderly, um, you can't even really find it. The thymus is really important because that's where the T lymphocytes mature. And they're gonna undergo a maturation process just like the B lymphocytes. So we'll check and see if any of the T lymphocytes recognize body parts. And if they do, then they'll either be deactivated or killed. And this is called thymic selection. The spleen is located on the left-hand side, right below the stomach, and the spleen will filter the blood. So lots of different white blood cells will hang out in the spleen and look for any invaders that might be in the blood. So white blood cells such as macrophages and dendritic cells, they'll phagocytize any microorganisms that came through the spleen and then present those antigens to some of the T lymphocytes to see if anybody recognizes those. The lymph nodes are going to be filtering the lymph, the extra fluid draining from the tissues, and we're going to have the same thing happen again. We've got lots of white blood cells hanging out in the lymph nodes, and they will check the fluid draining from the tissues, and if there's anything abnormal there, they will present that to some of the T lymphocytes and see if anyone recognizes that. And then these white blood cells can also migrate up the lymphatic vessels and then head towards where the infection is. So lymphoid tissue um, is a little bit more diffuse. It's, it's not like a you know, easily identified organ like the spleen and the lymph nodes are. Um, but we've got some of these that are located underneath the skin and in the mucous membranes. Um, we do have some that are in the GI tract and also in the airways. So we just um, abbreviate these. Um, the ones in the skin we call salt 
and then the ones in the mucous membranes are malt. And then the GI tract, we've got galt, and then the respiratory system, we have balt. This is a picture of salt, the skin-associated lymphoid tissue. This is located just right underneath your skin. So you've got some white blood cells that are hanging out here looking for any invaders coming in through the skin. And you have a type of dendritic cell that they've named the longer hand cell. It's just named after the scientists that discovered it, but they're just dendritic cells. And remember, dendritic cells are phagocytic. So if they find something that shouldn't be there, they will phagocytize it, they eat it, and then they will travel down to the lymphatic vessels to the nearest lymph node, where we have some of our T lymphocytes hanging out like these helper T cells. And the dendritic cell will then present a piece of what it found to the helper T cell and see if it recognizes it. And if it does, then we'll start activating an immune response to that. And then malt is just in the mucous membrane. So we'll take a look at GALT. Um, so this is in the GI tract. So GALT consists of your tonsils and also the pyres patches, which are in the walls of the small intestine, and then your appendix as well. Here are a couple of pictures of malt. So the picture on the left, we're looking at the epithelial cells that make up the lining of the GI tract here, and they make up the mucous membrane. So some of these cells secrete mucus, and then some of these cells are a little bit specialized. You don't need to know this, but they're just, they have ways to sample what's out there and get that over to the white blood cells and see if anyone recognizes that. And if they do recognize it as something bad, then they will mount a response and secrete these IgA antibodies out into the mucus. The IgA antibodies are really important because they will then bind to maybe um, we've got a, a bad bacteria, maybe some salmonella, and these antibodies will bind to the bacteria or virus, whatever microorganism it is. And if these antibodies are bound to the microorganism, then the microorganism can't bind to the receptors on the mucous membrane cells, and then they can't get inside and cause problems.